In the international soft drink market, Coca-Cola and Pepsi are the long-term rivals. Whatever market they enter into, they always compete with each other. This rivalry between Coca-Cola and Pepsi is famously known as Cola Wars. But in India, the story is different. Here the story doesn't start with Coca-Cola or Pepsi, but with an Indian brand called Parley, which played a major role in shaping Indian soft drink industry. This story is nothing short of a movie filled with unexpected twist, politics and great rivalry. Be sure to watch this video till the end to get full understanding of this great story. So, without any further delay, let's start today's episode on Cola Wars India. Parle brand needs no introduction. It is an Indian food product company. In 1940s, Parle was at the heights of its success mainly because of one product, Parle Gluco biscuits or famously known as Parle G. This product was so popular that Parle had a huge office in Mumbai for the Gluco brand alone and used to spend aggressively on marketing it. But then something interesting happened. In 1949, Parle decided to enter into cola market by capitalizing on its already popular Gluco brand and hence launched a cola drink called Gluco Cola which sounds similar to Coca-Cola and that's where the problem is. Coca-Cola was not happy with this kind of branding. Although Coca-Cola did not have a presence in India till 1950, it had registered its trademark in India and Cola filed a case against Parle for very similar name which may confuse the consumer ultimately leading to brand dilution. Parle had to change its cola drink name and the new name given was Parle Cola. But Coca-Cola was still not convinced. It again filed a case against Parle. After a long battle which went on for 2 years, Parle came under pressure and discontinued Parle Cola in 1951. But Parle was not the one to give up its ambition so easily. In 1952, Parle launched an orange flavored cola called Gold Spot. Gold Spot became an instant hit because it tasted good even when it is slightly chilled. It was popular especially among children who loved the orange taste with a fizz. Over the next few years, Parle led by Ramesh Chauhan put efforts into the beverage business and expanded its presence across India by setting up more bottling plants and franchise network for Gold Spot. By 1970, Parle had a pan-Indian presence through its wide bottling plant network for Gold Spot. and the time was just right to introduce another beverage to capitalize on this investment with an orange drink already in the portfolio next obvious choice was a lemon drink to differentiate itself from the competitors parle used a special technique to produce a drink with cloudy look and called it limka derived from the phrase limbuka which in hindi means of lemon the limka brand launched in 1971 and was targeted ladies who wanted a fizzy non-cola alternative by the mid 1970s gold spot and limka had established themselves as strong brands in metros and major cities across india but there was still a scope for expansion in the meantime coca cola was also gaining strength in india through its aggressive marketing and partnerships with bottling units the battle between coca cola and parley was getting fierce day by day and both the companies were spending aggressively to promote their respective brands Although Parley had established Gold Spot and Limka as a successful brand, it never allowed the success to get on its head. Parley knew that it would not be wise to take on giant like Coca-Cola head on head by introducing a cola beverage and hence chose not to introduce any cola drink and limited its scope within the market for orange and lemon drink. Gold Spot was famous among children, Limka was positioned as a drink for women whereas Coca-Cola was famous among youth. While Coca-Cola and Parley were competing to gain market share on the political front things were uncertain. In 1975 under Indira Gandhi government emergency was imposed and lakhs were imprisoned. This had taken toll on soft drink market since outings trips and vacations had taken back seat. While MNCs like Coca-Cola could withstand such shutdown but Indian companies like Parley which had spent heavy amounts on bottling facilities and their recent expenditure on expansion plans suddenly found it difficult to sustain by 1977 parley was thinking about scaling down its operations and limiting itself to metros but all is not going well for coca cola also the threat was not from parley but from indian government 
In an effort to stop money from moving out of India, government under Indira Gandhi has passed a legislation which requires foreign companies to reduce their stake in their Indian subsidiaries to just 40%. It was called the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act or FERA and government gave two years time to complete this process. Coca-Cola agreed to government rules to be in the market. In early 1977, after the revocation of emergency, general elections were held in which Indira Gandhi lost and the government was formed by Janata Party. One of the key members in this government was George Fernandez. He was also the Union Minister of Industries. He was a nationalist and hated MNCs. His belief was that foreign companies were looting India. Around the same time, Coca-Cola was making record profits out of India, which didn't go well with George Fernandez. He had made up his mind to drive out MNCs from India and as a last resort, try to hit Coca-Cola where it would hurt the most. We all know that Coca-Cola is highly secretive about its recipe or formula used to prepare Coke and would never reveal it even at the gunpoint and government asked Coca-Cola to reveal their secret formula. For Coca-Cola, options were clear, either reveal its secret formula or leave India and Coca-Cola chose second option. Coca-Cola starts winding up its operations, closes bottling plants and leaves India in 1977. It leads to huge void as there is no cola drink in the market. But George Fernandez had other plans. His plan was to make a Swadeshi cola drink to replace Coca-Cola. This job was assigned to Center for Food Technologies Research Institute or CFRTI. They managed to come up with the best compromise which tested close to Coca-Cola. The government was satisfied with the results and next challenge was to give an appropriate name. The name 77 was chosen to signify 1977, the year in which emergency ended. Huge money was spent on marketing it with the taglines like, for the good times. Although the marketing was aggressive, public response was not up to the mark because people who were habituated to Coca-Cola found it no match to Coke. Before we go further into the story, Let's peek into the business model of soft drink industry, which will help us understand and appreciate the events which will unfold after Coca-Cola's exit from Indian market. In its simplest form, a typical soft drink business comprises of two parties, concentrate supplier and bottling plant. Concentrate supplier provides the concentrate which can be in the form of syrup or powder. The bottling plant mixes the concentrate with water adds carbon dioxide to produce the carbonated soft drink and distributes it to the retail outlets. In case of Coca-Cola, the concentrate supplier was Coca-Cola company which used to supply the concentrate to several bottling plants who would add it to water, carbonate it and distribute it on behalf of Coca-Cola. Most of these bottling plants of Coca-Cola in and around national capital region were actually owned by a company called Pure Drinks. When Coca-Cola quit India in 1977, the operations of bottling franchise Pure Drinks came to a halt. For some time, it was distributing government's double seven cola, but it didn't work out. The owner of Pure Drink, Satwan Singh, who had an entrepreneurial mind, had some other ambitious plans in his mind. He wanted to launch his own brand of cola to fill the gap left by Coca-Cola. And by the end of the year, his team has developed a concentrate formula which tasted similar to Coca-Cola. It was now the time to brand new cola drink by Pure Drink. Since the company was well aware of the fact that customers loved Coca-Cola brand, it chose the name which imitates it, Campa Cola. They were trying to replicate Coca-Cola. Even the fonts and the color of Campa Cola were replica of Coca-Cola. Campa Cola turned out to be successful within weeks. However, its supply was limited only to national capital region and metros. This way, void left by Coca-Cola was quickly filled in by some local brands, the major ones being Camper Cola, Torino, Dixie Cola, Dukes and several more scattered across India. So there was still no pan-India cola brand which could fulfill the void left by Coca-Cola. But where is Parley in the whole story? Parley was still in observation mode because it had already burned its fingers few years ago with cola brand called Gluco-Cola. Parley already had more than 50 franchises across India bottling their Gold Spot and Limca. And it was just a matter of incremental effort to introduce a cola drink which could in turn become a pan-India cola drink. 
Ramesh Chauhan leading the Parley Soft Drink Company and the brain behind Goldspot and Limca dedicated himself for this challenging task from the scratch. Since Indians were accustomed to spices, Ramesh wanted a new drink to be spicy and the team experimented with Indian ingredients. Another point to be considered was that the drink had to be fizzy even if it is slightly cool. They worked on this project for months and finally they had a cola drink which was unique. It was Indian in taste. It's spicy, less sweeter and fizzier than Coca-Cola. Now that the concentrate formula was developed, the next task was to come up with a name for this cola drink and this cola drink was named as Thumbs Up. It was a tense moment for the Thumbs Up team for the initial few days after the launch because never before had anybody offered such a unique cold drink. But this brand turned out to be an instant success. Even those who were obsessed with Coca-Cola despite some initial criticism due to strong taste soon accepted and appreciated it. By 1978, Thumbs Up had truly filled the void left by Coca-Cola and in many ways considered more Swadeshi than the government's double seven cola. Because Thumbs Up was not just made in India, it tasted like India. But this is not going to be a cakewalk for Thumbs Up. Real competition starts when Coca-Cola and Pepsi enter into Indian market. Their rivalry and politics will take this competition to the next level. This is not the end but the beginning of new cola wars. More on it in the next and final episode. So that's the video guys. If you like my content, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to smash that bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Thanks for watching. This is Curious Monk signing off.